Okay, so we're going to talk about macromolecules, and in particular, we're going to discuss what a carbohydrate and a lipid is today. Before we go into the details of what a carbohydrate and a lipid are, we need to actually define what a macromolecule is. So a macromolecule is a large organic molecule, and for something to be organic, um, you know it has to contain carbon. And we call a macromolecule a polymer. And it's made up of many building blocks of monomers. So we're going to discuss the monomers of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Um, and you're going to see how those can create these big macromolecules. OK, so the first question we have to ask ourselves is how are macromolecules formed? Well, they're formed through what's called dehydration synthesis and it's also called a condensation reaction. So basically what happens is these polymers are formed by combining monomers, and the way they do that is they end up removing water. That's the same color, let's try a different color. Okay, so here is an H, here is an HO, and they remove the water to make this one polymer. But how are macromolecules separated or digested? Well, if water is removed to create them, then water is added to break them apart. And that is what we call hydrolysis. Okay, so you have this same exact example from the previous slide. And then we're gonna add water. And so we start, we get what we started with to be, uh, in the beginning. So add water is hydrolysis. Take water away and we are breaking, um, we're creating a new molecule. Since we now understand how to make and separate macromolecules, let's focus on carbohydrates. Okay, so a carbohydrate is a sugar. Um, it's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and it's always going to be in this one to two to one ratio. All right, it's very important that you um, get that. It's always going to be one to two to one. Our monomer is glucose, and you can have a simple or a complex carbohydrate. Okay, so we're going to focus on simple carbohydrates and those are called monosaccharides. And if you just tear the word apart, mono means one or single and saccharide is your sugar. So these are all single sugars. We have glucose, which the formula is C6H12O6. There's that one to two to one ratio. But ironically, we have fructose, which has the same formula, and galactose, which has the same formula. But if you look at these images here, you will see that glucose, fructose, and galactose all have different um, configurations. And that makes a very big difference in their purpose. So, well, it makes a difference in how they look. And they're all used for energy purposes. Okay, so dealing with complex carbohydrates, we have disaccharides. And disaccharides are your favorite things, probably. That would be sucrose. This is table sugar. So it's a combination of glucose plus fructose. So you have glucose here and you have fructose here, and they combine to make a sucrose molecule. You have lactose, which is glucose plus galactose, and then you have maltose, which is glucose plus glucose. And again, their function is strictly energy. Now, you need to know these right here. You need to know that glucose and fructose make sucrose. So you need to learn um, and memorize these combinations. Okay, so another important complex carbohydrate is our polysaccharides. And polysaccharides are very complex. They're really long. 
Um, cellulose, glycogen, and starch are examples. Cellulose is in lettuce and corn. Glycogen is in animal muscle. Starch is in bread and potatoes. And the basic formula for a polysaccharide is glucose plus glucose. Uh, and then you have an, a number, an infinite number, whatever it is, 75, 216, 16, uh, number of chains of this glucose plus glucose. And their function is to serve as energy and structural support. Okay, let's see what we can recall. Glucose is the building block of carbohydrates. Which best describes glucose? Is it a nucleotide, a monosaccharide, an amino acid, or a fatty acid? If you answered monosaccharide, you are correct. Way to go. Now we have reached our discussion on lipids. We're gonna go into some details about different kinds of lipids, um, but I will point out what is necessary for you to know for the assessment. Okay, so lipids are structurally made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So they are organic. Um, they are nonpolar molecules, which are not soluble in water. So they are hydrophobic. Hydro means water, phobic is fearing. Um, monomers are, the, are fatty acids. And we have three types that we're gonna talk about, fats, steroids, and waxes. Okay, so let's talk about the functions of a lipid. One is energy storage. You will get more energy stored from lipids than you will from a carbohydrate. Insulating against the cold is very important. Um, wells and blubber. Absorbing physical shock, believe it or not, that is, that is necessary, a necessary purpose of lipid. Protection against water loss, chemical messengers, they are hormones, and they are the basic component of the membrane, the phospholipids. So there are two kinds of fatty acids that you need to know about, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fatty, fatty acids are all single bonds. You're going to find they are usually solids, um, butter and cheeses, they come from animals, so saturated, is uh, if you'll look at the drawing, you'll see every single carbon has a single bond. However, the unsaturated, you're gonna find one or more double bonds and that's gonna be in your liquids. Okay, so on your notes, what you need to do is you need to identify um, which image is which. Are you looking at a saturated or an unsaturated? So the carbons, again, if you see all single bonds, carbons are going to be saturated. And if you see a double bond in there, it is unsaturated. And carbon um, saturated fatty acids come from animals, unsaturated fatty acids come from plants, and they are actually the healthier ones. Okay, so I have a piece of an image for you of a fatty acid, and let's try to identify it. So we see that this one is all connected. There's um, everything has one line coming out of it. Basically, it's a saturated fatty acid. And the unsaturated fatty acid is responsible for making that bend because it has the double bonds. Let's look at a triglyceride structure. A triglyceride is glycerol plus three fatty acids. Okay, so there are ester linkages form between the hydroxyl group of the glycerol and the carboxyl group of the fatty acid. You need to know that it is ester, but not much beyond that. Um, let's look at this drawing here. I want you to tell me how many chains are present. So how many chains do you see? Okay, so let's see. We have one, two, three. So we have three chain chains present. And the backbone is made of glycerol right here. That's your backbone. So what I'd like for you to do now is circle the fatty acid group and then box the glycerol. All right, so let me delete that, okay. I'm going to circle the fatty acid group and our fatty acids, we have three. 
So let's just make a big circle. That's really an ugly circle, but you get the point. And then we are going to box the glycerol. Okay, so it looks something like that. Um, please make yours look prettier than mine if possible. Okay, now we're going to discuss phospholipids. The structure of a phospholipid is that it is glycerol plus two fatty acids, and then we add a phosphate group on top of that. Their function is structural. They are the main component of membranes, and they're arranged in bilayers. All right, so we have some questions here on your paper that you need to answer. What are the fatty acid tails? Are they hydrophobic or hydrophilic? So the tails are down here. The, hydropho the tails are hydrophobic. And you can't read that because my eraser, my pen is too big. Okay, so you need to write that the uh, fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. And then the PO4 head is hydrophilic. Again, hydrophilic means water loving, hydrophobic is water fearing. All right, so let's circle the head and let's box the tail. So we're gonna circle the head this, there's your head, and we're gonna box the tail. Okay, what does a phospholipid have that other fatty acid structures don't? Well, if you answered a phosphorus or a phosphate group, then you are correct. Okay, so let's look at a phospholipid in the water and you will see um, we have two questions left. Which part is attracted to water and which part likes to hide from water? So this is our water right here. It's surrounding um, the molecule, the phospholipid bilayer of water on either side. And the hydrophobic, hydrophilic head likes the water. So that's why the water is touching the head, okay? So that's your answer to the first one. And then the tails hate water. Hydrophobic, they don't like water. They're afraid of it, basically. So that's the part that likes to hide. So hydrophilic likes water. Hydrophobic hides from it. All right, quiz time. What kind of a molecule is structure A? Is it A, a carbohydrate, B, an amino acid, C, a nucleic acid, or D, a phospholipid? If you answer D, phospholipid, you are correct. As you can see, you have two parts. You have your hydrophilic head and your hydrophobic tails. Those are your phospholipids. All right, for waxes, um, I'm only going into a little bit of detail. A wax serves as a coating for plant parts and animal coverings. Um, examples are earwax and beeswax. And then we have steroids. They are, um, the function is the component of the animal cell membrane. They are modified from cholesterol and they form sex hormones like testosterone. Uh, the structure is going to be a four carbon ring with no fatty acid tails. You don't have to know that or write that on your paper. It was just going above with some extra information. Okay, so here's a drawing of it. And that is all we have to say about that.